dangerous for you men who have not yet flown overseas. These are shots of our planes flying through flak over France and the Low Countries. This is no attempt to minimize the danger of flak. The gunners are good, particularly the Germans. Their weapons and methods are good. Good enough to lay a shell on a plane five miles up flying 300 miles an hour. Nevertheless, we've got a higher percentage of planes coming back now. There are a couple of reasons for that. One is the plane guts and skill of our bomber crews. Another is the increasing information from our flak intelligence. Bomber crews are forewarned as to what to expect, specifically. They're told, for instance, to begin taking evasive action three minutes off the enemy coast. It will consist of 20 degree changes in course, made at least every 30 seconds and held for at least 10 seconds. Here, you are to gain a thousand feet in altitude. Arriving at your initial point, make a 90 degree change of course, lose a thousand feet, and continue evasive action until you start your bombing run. They know that these briefing room statements are based on a scientific study, and they understand why evasive action must be flown exactly as planned. So that those of you who do not know can get the same understanding, let's have a good look at this flak business. Enemy anti-aircraft weapons vary from heavy guns like the German 88 mm flak, the German 105 mm flak, the Japanese 75 mm, to small caliber automatic weapons, between the heavy gun and the small caliber automatic weapon. The heavy gun destroys aircraft by using a time fuse shell to put a large explosive burst in the near vicinity of the target. It must be and is accurate to high altitudes. The automatic weapon depends on a dense concentration of fire, flexibly controlled. Its shells explode when they actually hit the target. In heavy anti-aircraft fire, the problem of getting the necessary accuracy requires painstaking fire control. Let's see why. A heavy gun shell takes roughly one second to climb 1,000 feet. That's why a gunner always leads his target like a hunter firing at ducks in flight. The hunter must pledge his lead and aim ahead of the duck, if he is to hit it. But because of the great altitude and speed of a bomber, the anti-aircraft gunner cannot rely on dead reckoning. His leading must be a careful mathematical calculation. First, the aircraft is picked up in an optical sight and held on the crosshair. The sight keeps tracking it continuously obtaining its direction and angular height while a stereoscopic rangefinder determines the altitude. This mechanical quiz kid digests the data and automatically computes the right lead, setting the guns. Of course, guns do not fire singly, but in batteries of four or six. Our symbol now represents the heavier fire of a whole battery making a continuous pattern of bursts along the plane's course. Each battery maintains predicted fire until it can no longer reach the attacking planes. But new batteries take up the firing as soon as they come within range. This is called continuously pointed fire. The target sighted, direction, angular height, and altitude readings are taken at several points along its course. While the first salvos are on the way, a new prediction is in the making. Bursts occur practically simultaneously. Not as accurate as continuously pointed fire, the predicted concentration has greater volume. From the aircraft, predicted concentrations appear as groups of 10 or more bursts at spaced intervals of approximately 60 seconds. Continuing your present flight path for 35 seconds would place you right at the predicted point. Adding 25 seconds for approximate time of flight gives us a total of 65 seconds. However, by flying planned evasive action, that is a point you'll never reach. You can see from this that if you knew when to make changes and what changes to make, you could continuously defeat the predictions. Well, that's what flak intelligence has figured out. In other words, 
flying at 30,000 feet make a change at least every 30 seconds. In planning what kind of changes to make, we must avoid ineffective evasion. Do not fly a sinuous course illustrated here, because such small regular variations can be averaged out. The same is true for small regular changes in altitude. They can also predict on constant changes of altitude. When you consider the overall pattern of an evasive course in the sky, you can see that nervous minor changes are worthless. You will be told to start this planned evasive action three minutes before reaching a defended enemy area. Here the flak is fired into a certain volume of sky. Very roughly predicted, the individual bursts are inaccurate. But with all guns trained on this zone, a dense pattern is formed. To force the aircraft to fly through flak-filled space, the barrage is usually laid in front of the estimated bomb release line, thereby exposing yourself to additional fire. Further, you break the planned formation and invite added threat from the fighters. The evasive tactics we've seen so far were designed for heavy flak at high altitudes. Bombing missions are planned for high altitudes whenever possible because above 15,000 feet anti-aircraft effectiveness decreases. Flak is quite accurate at 15,000 feet, but it becomes less accurate with altitude. So that at 20,000 feet, it is only one half as accurate as it was at 15,000 feet. A common belief is that a magic medium altitude exists, where heavy flak has not yet become effective and light flak cannot reach. The safest altitude is either as high as possible or as low as possible, right down on the deck. Flying on the deck renders heavy guns impotent and at the same time gives the light automatic weapons their toughest possible traversing job. It also enables you to surprise anti-aircraft defenses by making use of defilade caused by trees, houses, and low hills. Further, it affords a chance to come in on enemy positions with forward guns blazing. Evasive tactics at this low level, however, will differ greatly from those at high altitude. The enemy's automatic weapons do not rely on directors, for with the great decrease in the range with which they deal, the leading problem becomes almost as rapid as the duck hunters. And with the time of flight so short, gentle 20 degree changes will turn ducks or bombers into clay pigeons. So against light flight, your protection lies in maximum speed combined with all the sudden alterations in the direction of flight that are possible within the limits of your formation. Skid turns, porpoising, corkscrews, side slipping, anything which will keep those gunners guessing. Yes, keep those gunners guessing. But guesswork on your part won't do it. Evasive action. Routes to and from the target, the initial point, and the bomb run all must be planned to take advantage of the latest available flak intelligence. And even more important, all must then be flown exactly as planned.
I would not do it even if I were to be burned There is the money. Because I have come to know that all men are brethren. How can you? Am I your brother also? Have mercy on yourself. They will give me away and I shall be transferred to the cell in the upper floor. I know my way from there. I hear her soft, lisping, pathetic voice. Stepan, or What Happened After the Murder, a very short monologue by Armando Rotondi, for Freya Treutmann, the set as praying. Where is your money? Where is the money? Where is your money? You will see how. Stop that talk. Where is the money? Okay. You will see how. Stop how can that I? talk. How can I? To destroy somebody's soul. To destroy somebody's soul and worse your Now you've done away with her, you must do away with yourself. Now you've or done away with her, you alone. must do away with yourself or we and will not thoughts. leave you alone. And an immense and pity for voice. her and a deep horror and disgust with and myself. And an immense pity for her and a deep horror and, and disgust with myself. My eyes. When the black faces reappear, once more I shut my eyes. Towards the evening I rise and go, with hardly any strength left to a public Towards house. Towards the evening I rise and go, with there hardly I order any drink strength to left. And repeat my demands over and house. over again, but no quantity of liquor can I order a drink. It. And repeat my demands over and sitting at and a table again, and but no quantity of liquor can make me intoxicated. And sitting at a table and swallow silently one glass Who are you? after another. I am the man who murdered all the Dobrotvorov people last night. Who are you? I am the man who murdered all the Dobrotvorov people last night. I stepped out of the house and stood barefooted at the door. I have no desire to I escape. I just grow. I surrender of my own life and so on. I stepped out of the house and stood barefooted at the door. I hit him and he just groaned. I went to his wife and so on. Where a number of convicts are confined. You see the grey wall, the striking of cell, the prison, I hear the sounds of the, the prison, prison, of the sentries, of the sentry, but at the same time, I see where the number of convicts are confined together, the striking of the prison clock, the steps of the sentry in the passage, but at the same time, I see her. To destroy that kind of face, worst of all, your own link. I hear her soft lisping, her voice dies away. Pathetic voice. The black faces appear. To destroy somebody's soul. With my and closed eyes, I see them all your own. How can When you? I open my eye, they vanish. After for a, a while, moment, her voice into the dies away, and, and then black faces appear. With my closed eyes, I see them more distinctly. When I open my eyes, they vanish for a moment, melting away into the Make an end. Make an end. Hang yourself. After a while, they reappear and surround me. Our lady. From our three sides. The wind whistles and howls in the pipes. Will you forgive me? Will you forgive me? She does not And say saying it. over and over, make an end, make an end, hang yourself, set yourself on fire. Our lady, our father, the wind whistles and howls in the pipes. Will you forgive me? Will you forgive me? She does not say a word. And what will become of those who have done evil? I do no pity for them. Go, you cursed villain, into everlasting well, punishment now, since you did not give not food to the hungry and swallowed it all yourself. Because I have come to know that all And will I never be pardoned? Am I your brother? Do also? you know our father? I will give me away and I shall be transferred to the cell on the upper floor. Have you I know no my way from there. there? I hear her soft listen. No, I did not know that. Well, and now? Where is your money? Now I would not do it even if I were to be burned. Where is the life? money? Because I have come to know that all men are brethren. How can you? Am I your brother also? Have mercy on yourself. They will give me away and I shall be transferred to the cell in the upper floor. I know my way from there. I hear her soft, whispering, pathetic.